السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن اهتدى بهداه وبعد we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We thank him upon all conditions. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his entire household, all his companions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them all. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every single one of us. Ameen. My brothers and sisters, when we are born, everyone is happy. Everyone is happy and everyone is congratulating the parents to say that a child is born, mashallah. And there is a lot of excitement. The innocent child grows up without knowing that already they are prejudiced against depending on their race, depending on where they were born, depending on the family they were born into, depending on a lot of other circumstances. People don't realize that. Already when you are born, there is a lot that happens. The choice was Allah's for you to be born in a specific family, in a specific area, in a specific locality, under certain circumstances. Some people are born in a war zone. It was not them who requested that. It was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then sometimes born into a society where things are normal. Normal meaning the child grows up, the child progresses, sent to a school. The innocent child really knows very little of what goes on in the real world. And as they grow up, they begin to become more and more acquainted with the news around them. So as they read the papers, they begin to see things. They are educated based on what is told to them. So if they are told certain things or bombarded with certain things, they become influenced or affected by that. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made reference or, or to a beautiful hadith where he says, مَا مِن مَوْلُودٍ إِلَّا وَيُولَدُ عَلَى الْفِطْرَةِ Every single one who's given birth to no one who's given birth to is given birth to except upon fitra. Fitra meaning the nature, pure, clean. If they had remained uncontaminated, perhaps in a secluded place, they would never have associated partners with Allah. If you take a human being from the point of birth, and if they happened to have been in an island, only them, just one human from birth, they would turn towards one maker. They would realize that, you know what? By nature, I'm supposed to be pure. I'm supposed to be truthful. I'm supposed to be good. I'm supposed to be kind. And I'm supposed to worship whoever made me. And this was the most important thing for man. This is the whole test of man. How do you allow your environment to make you or break you? How do you allow it to influence you, the environment? If your parents happen to be people who drove you to a certain habit, a certain quality, a certain faith. There comes an age or a stage in your life when you should start asking questions. Perhaps my father is wrong. Perhaps my mother is wrong. Perhaps whom or what they are worshipping is absolutely unacceptable. We need to start asking questions. Perhaps what they are doing is not taught by the maker. Perhaps they are innovators. Perhaps, and these type of questions are extremely healthy. In fact, they are normal, natural, and they are a requirement of every human being because on the day of judgment, Allah is going to ask you. He's not going to say, what did your father say? What did your mother say? What did you do? How did you respond? We gave you a mind of your own. Why didn't you ask the questions? Why didn't you respond? Why didn't you go forth and find the answers to those questions? Why were you so engrossed in the worldly materialistic life, knowing that people are dying, knowing that people do not live on this earth for longer than a few decades? That's it. So it was the duty and responsibility of everyone to ask, including ourselves. Still to this day, we should keep on asking, why am I praying this way? Where was it taught from? Is it right? Why are they doing this? Is it okay? You need to search for answers. People might not give you the answers immediately, but you need to keep on looking until you find it from divine revelation. You are satisfied and convinced. Similarly, as the child grows older, the child begins to find that the world out there, sadly, is very dirty. 
so dirty that there are crooks out there. There are people who are deceivers. There are people who are out there to get you. There are people who are not happy when you progress. There are people who become jealous of any achievement of yours. There are people who will lie, deceive. They, then, for example, the child grows up and goes into business, doesn't realize this is the system, wherever they may be on the globe, could be corrupt. An innocent child thinking, you know what, I've got my degree, now I'm going to go into the field and everything's going to be rosy. My brother, my sister, you don't know what the real world is all about. When you first apply, you make your first application for something and people ask you for a bribe. And then you wake up, you say, but I'm a human. Well, now you're exposed to the reality. May Allah forgive us. May Allah strengthen us. It's not supposed to be that way. But guess what? In a lot of instances, it has become that way. So this corrupt society where people do so many things that are wrong, we become despondent. As human beings, it's natural when you are working in a system and you feel, look, I'm earning legitimate halal income, but people are making it so difficult for me. There comes days when you are quite sad, not angry with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but upset that others are not honest. And sometimes shaitan drives us to dishonesty as well. Because I tell you the system that Allah has placed within a human being, when you have good company and righteous people around you, you become a better person. When you have dirty people around you who are not worth even being spoken to, it makes you a different person over time. If you are married to someone who's really horrible, after 10 years, you might tell yourself, you know what, I've become horrible, not because I'm horrible, but because I've had to put up with such horrendous situations. I've had to put up with something. I've become a person I wasn't. For example, if you happen to be in a society where there is so much of ugliness, you don't realize you've also taken a bit of that ugliness into yourself. It's just it happens because you're a human being, you are affected by it. This is why sometimes you have to move out of the whole society and community, go alone to wherever you are in order to be protected from the harm of that society, especially when it comes to drugs, when it comes to bad habits, when it comes to a situation whereby there's no good people in the entire society. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to understand. This is the advice of Muhammad sallallahu when he was asked that what if there's no one who's good, there's nothing happening in the direction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning no one's going in that direction. He says, go and stick to a tree stump until you meet me on the hawb on the day of judgment. Go be on your own because when you're on your own, what would happen is you won't be that contaminated by the society around you. So. Obviously, you and I, we're human beings. We trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala totally. We believe completely that whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has predestined for me, that's the best for me. It's the best for me. And I keep on asking Allah's goodness. The condition is I need to be satisfied with Allah. I need to keep on worshiping Allah. I need to keep on thanking Allah. I need to keep on checking myself. Have I become contaminated due to the society around me? And if I am heading in the right direction, Alhamdulillah, I have nothing to worry about. My brothers and sisters, very interestingly, I want to pick up some points from Surat Yusuf. Why? Because he was an innocent child who, who was born into a family where his own brothers were so jealous of him, they decided to eradicate him, literally to kill him off. So what did they do? They started discussing, and I don't want to go into the first part of the story, but they came a stage when he ended up being imprisoned. Why was he imprisoned? He was threatened and he was told, we will imprison you. He was threatened. He was asked to do something criminal, something wrong. If you don't do this, that is wrong. We're going to jail you. Now, obviously with us, all of us, we become despondent sometimes to a certain degree. It's our Iman that keeps us afloat. Every time you are feeling low, it's your Iman that makes you feel high again. It's a good word from someone that makes you feel worthwhile once again, because the world is full of warfare. It's full of so much of negativity. Only it is only human for us to feel sad at the situation around us. So. Allah gives us stories in the Quran and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has narrated the stories of those of the past in order for me to draw a lesson from. I need to look at it and tell myself, wow, Yusuf alayhi salam was better than me, but he went through greater hardship than me. I haven't been jailed. Yes, I may have been threatened. How did I react to threats? 
Yusuf alayhi salam was told, if you don't commit this sin, there's going to be a big problem for you. And do you know what type of a problem? They told him, we're going to make sure you rot in jail. Subhanallah. That was the threat. Now, it happens sometimes in our own lives. People threaten us. Watch out. You better do this. Otherwise, this will happen and that will happen. So these type of threats come to us in business, in community, in family, wherever else it may be. It's, it's becoming more and more common. People threaten. I'm going to fix you. You're going to see what I will do with you. And every time I hear comments of that nature, I always say, well, you will see what Allah does with you. Allahu Akbar. You will see, you might be able to achieve something in this dunya. Nothing that is not written for me can happen to me. So whatever you are trying to do, if it's best for me, it will happen. If it is good for me to spend 10 years in the jail, inshallah, if Allah wills, it may happen. It's better for me. I will always be a happy man. Do you know why? I draw inspiration from revelation. And that revelation has told me that someone far better than you spent many years in jail with a smile. Knowing that they were totally innocent, people concocted evidence. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Yusuf, and this is put so beautifully that if you are not, these women told Yusuf alayhi salam, if you're not going to commit this crime, we will jail you. Do you know what he says? Oh my Rabb. It is better for me to be jailed than to commit a crime against you, O oh Allah. Imagine, he's saying, O oh Allah, I'd rather go to the jail. I will sit there, Alhamdulillah, I will thank you. But I don't want to commit a sin against you. Look at his priorities. How many of us would prioritize that way? Where there's a crime to be committed or a jail sentence looming. And we say, I don't mind going to jail, but I'm not going to do this. Allahu Akbar. Look at the inspiration. Allah says, those are the chosen ones. Do you know what Allah says? فَاسْتَجَابَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ فَصَرَفَ عَنْهُ كَيْدًا Allah responded, Allah answered his dua. He made a dua, oh Allah, I don't mind jail, but I don't want to commit this sin. So Allah says, we gave him, we answered his dua. Amazing. So Allah says, ثُمَّ بَدَى لَهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا رَأَوُ الْآيَاتِ لَيَسْجُنُنَّهُ حَتَّى حِينَ after they saw the concocted evidence against Yusuf alayhi salam, the decision was made by the courts to jail him. Concocted evidence. So it means people concocted evidence against Yusuf alayhi salam. They could do it against me, against you. It's quite simple. It's quite easy. And the system may decide to jail you or me. What's the big deal? If it is corrupt, it's corrupt. I will go into the jail just like Yusuf alayhi salam did. But that does not make me guilty of anything. It makes me a mu'min. I can go in with a smile. Yusuf alayhi salam, one of the most beautiful characteristics that we pick up from him is that all this evil did not make him evil. That's something I need to learn from. All the evil, the bad people, the rot in society, the people that have let you down in the biggest way possible. They must not make you a bad person. Your character must be loftier than theirs. You must be far higher than them in your link with Allah. You must be far higher than them in your conduct and your character. Because those types of people will keep on coming into your life and out of your life. They will continue until the point of death as a test from Allah. But the lesson that you and I have to learn from it is, has it changed me as a person? That's the question. If it changed you, you lost because that was your tailor-made test. Evil people had to come to you to threaten you, to ask you to do crimes, to let you down, to commit crimes against you, only for Allah to test you. What do you do? We gave you an inspirational story. We told you about Yusuf alayhi salam. We explained we loved him more than any one of you. He was a Nabi of Allah, a son of a Nabi of Allah, a son of another Nabi and a son of another Nabi. He was one of the most blessed people possible. He was one of the great grandchildren of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. And we are showing you that all this bad evil that was happening did not change him. He was still a man who could smile. He could thank Allah. He told Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah, I thank you. You answered my prayer. I'm sitting in the jail. And Allah says, subhanallah, he was so happy. He went in with a smile. And when he went in with such a beautiful smile, the people in the prison, his companions noticed that this man is such a blessed person. He's been sentenced here to a long jail term. And here he walks in saying, alhamdulillah, I thank 
thank you, oh Allah. They were shocked. Who was shocked? The two who were there in the cell. They looked at him and they said, First point we realize. We notice you are from amongst the muhsineen, those who do good, those who are, you are one of the pious people. I can see it in your face. It's simple. You know, when we're standing in a petrol queue, for example, that takes 12 hours, and there are certain people who are stressed, they are phoning, swearing, shouting, and others are smiling. One is reading the Quran, one is looking at someone else, few people lay the carpet out there, reading salah. You can see the difference. They're both going to get the fuel, but one was getting it with a smile, and the other, they were stressed and depressed, tension, they had to go to the doctors, they had to get medication, they came out and they got sick. Subhanallah. And the other one was smiling, it strengthened their iman, they read their salah, they invited others, people People were inspired by them and they carried on. That was the test. That's what we learned from Yusuf alayhi salam very quickly. So his companions tell him, <laughs> We see you as a good man. One of them said, I have seen that I am squeezing wines. And the other one says, I have seen in my dream that I ha have, meaning there, are, there is a tray on my head and the birds are eating from it. So please give us the interpretation of our dreams because you're a good man. You look like a very good man. You're so happy here. Unlike us, we are stressed. We are literally depressed. Subhanallah. Yusuf alayhi salam says, hang on. Now listen, his character didn't change. His conduct didn't change. Nothing changed for Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. Do you know what he says? He says, Ya sahibai sijini. He says, oh my companions. Look at how he respects them. The way he's talking to them. With us, you look at someone who looks like, okay, this guy looks like a criminal. You don't want to even greet properly. You don't want to talk properly. Never mind the criminals. The good people in society. You don't want to talk to them. You don't want to greet them. Nothing. Why? It's a weakness that we all have as a society, as a community, as, as humanity. We, ha we are losing this human side of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us once again. So Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam, what does he do? He says, oh my companions of the prison, oh my cellmates, do you know what? What you've asked me to interpret, I will get to that. But there is something much more important than that. What is it? I will, before the food comes to us, you will have the interpretation of the dream, but lend me an ear. To do what? He knows that, look, this world is temporary. The, the link I have with Allah, the knowledge I have about Allah, the fact that I'm a Muslim, I believe I'm the child of Yaqub, Jacob, may peace be upon him. Let me share it with them. So he says, لا يأتيكما طعام ترزقانه إلا نبأتكما بتأويله قبل أن يأتيكما. He explained to them, I will give you the interpretation of your dream before the food comes to you. You don't worry. But then he says, يا صاحب السجن أرباب متفرقون خير أم الله الواحد القهار. Oh my companions of the cell. Do you think that all these gods that are being worshipped besides Allah are better or to worship he who made you alone? So he sees the opportunity to do da'wah, to talk about the one God, but he was in jail. If we had to go into the jail for one day, we are so depressed, so stressed that subhanallah, a person would come out sick and ill. It would traumatize them for decades to come. This man was in there for years. He was so happy, so delighted. He seized opportunities. It didn't change him. It didn't make him ugly. It didn't make him bad. He seized the opportunity. Oh, my companions, let me teach you something. You know about Allah? Let me tell you. Subhanallah. Imagine in our case, teaching someone salah, making them a Muslim, teaching them Quran, reading whatever you know. The difficulty is how much do we know to start with? Then what happened? Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam later on interpreted the dream. And later on he told them, look, one of you is going to be with these, with the king here or with the chief minister here. When you are there, remember me. Please mention me. Allah wanted that person to forget. You see, that again shows us that in society, when people are in need, they will quickly say things. But the minute they are in ease again, they forget you. They forget who helped them. They forget everything. Why? Because they are in ease once again. Allah is teaching us a true believer. You don't forget. Al-Ihsan. Hal jazaa'ul ihsan illa al-ihsan. Is the recompense of goodness. 
according to a believer, anything besides goodness, someone did good to you, do good back to them. Subhanallah. With us, it's the opposite way. You can do good to someone for, for an entire lifetime. There will come a time when you only see evil in return. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us, rectify us and correct us. That is the nature of humankind today. Like I say, it's not a problem just in one society or community. It's across the globe. People forget goodness because now they are in ease. They step back. They don't realize with Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam, the man forgot totally. And Allah created a scenario where the, that man had a dream. The king or the chief minister had a dream. And as a result, Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam was called upon once again to interpret the beautiful dream. He was not arrogant. He didn't say, you guys jailed me for nothing. Now I'm not going to talk to you. No, he rose to the occasion in such a beautiful way. His character and conduct didn't change. He responded, he helped, he assisted. Allah gave him both prophethood as well as power on the earth. Allah made him a leader. And at the same time, when the day came, subhanallah, when he met his parents or his brothers, he was so humble. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all benefit. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a beautiful lesson from these few words that I've uttered. Many of us going through a lot of difficult times in our business, in our families, in our societies. It is definitely inspiration to be looked at. Within the story of Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam, may Allah grant that to us. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad.